This week, a guy called Marcus Lamb, who was a televangelist in Dallas. He was the CEO and founder of Daystar Television, apparently the second largest Christian ministry in the country. He was somebody who thought that COVID was sent by the devil to um, pester people or whatever. And he died of it, which is a tragedy. The guy was incredibly successful at what he did. One of those uh, prosperity gospel guys. In fact, he was the guy, I think, who got the PPP money during lockdown. Remember that? He got I made about $4 million or something from the PPP fund. And soon after, he went out and bought a private jet with it. And then eventually he was found out and he was made to pay it back. But the main thing is, from our point of view, he was anti-vax and he spread this anti-vax message to his congregation, who trusted him. I mean, he could have killed somebody. Oh, in fact, he did, himself. So I thought I'd do his transition pictures. And when I went into his energy, it was utterly fascinating. He fell incredibly awkwardly in this metaphorical cave I always see when I do the pictures. And as he sat on the ground, recovering, a lifetime of repressed feelings, of darkness, raged out of him. He yelled, what is this? Why me? Rage, rage, rage. And when that died down, he stood up and he looked around at this, what is always a metaphorical cavern to me, in my head. Big, huge place. He stands in the middle of it and rages a second time, but in a religious way, like, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? Kind of thing. Where are you? Lord, meet me here right now. Meet me halfway. Prove that I am worthy. It was a big evangelical kind of diva performance. Of course, nobody came, because that's a mortal construct, not a spiritual one. He sees the tunnel, and he feels the pull to go up the tunnel. But he is also feeling tremendous injustice. Why am I being victimized in this way? didn't seem to be able to take responsibility for how he had arrived at this place. That it was all on his own head. Now, you can't go into the light that waits for you when you are of that low consciousness, heavy, heavy energy. doesn't matter how religious you were in life. You've got to somehow fit in to this energy. And the low stuff, the ballast, has to be removed from you. And just ahead, there were these two almost like revolving brushes from a car wash. You know, those revolving brushes that he had to pass through. And as he passed through them, all this extraneous stuff was stripped away from him. They were there to beat his meta-narrative out of him and allow his spirit, his consciousness, to rise. No fakery, just authenticity. No religion, just spirituality. He'd gone from physical to non-physical, mortal to immortal, and he was finally finding out what this all meant. And it didn't agree with what he'd been learning or preaching in real life, as far as I could tell. But when he emerged from the brushes, he was a depleted man. And yet, infinitely stronger. Of course, because he's now no longer encumbered by the nonsense that he had carried with him, and the darkness, and the fears and the false beliefs. He was no longer encumbered in this way. He emerged lighter, ready for crossing over into the light. It was a blessing, a true blessing from the Lord. The Lord had met him halfway. 
And when he got to the light, he fell to his knees. And I thought, I'll have a quick look through his consciousness, see if I can align with that and find out what is going on, maybe. And what he was seeing were these big, billowing clouds that were almost scary to him, and they were moving in on him. This was unconditional love from grace, the universe. And he didn't recognize it as such. He saw it as a monster about to devour him. And he didn't have to go into the light because the light consumed him. By the time he'd even half figured out what this was, the light was all around him. And he was gone. But the thing he feared was unconditional love. He saw it as a monster. I don't quite understand why. But it endorses something we have known for a very long time now from these pictures. That you don't need a building, a book, a preacher, or anything that tries to tell you what life is about and how you should live it. All you need for your own enlightenment, enlightenment is to take the path of higher intention. Be loving, be kind, be compassionate and be forgiving. That's it. Do those things every minute of every day, and life works out. And this is what this guy needed to know. But he ended up enfolded in grace and welcomed home, the same as everybody else. Love, kindness, forgiveness, compassion. And that's what I learned from Marcus Lamb. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Subscribe if you would, like, share. Follow me on Twitter at Cash Peters if you want to. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.